the looks and everything. Ponder, if you will, the familiar faces that adorned the hallowed walls of this nocturnal arcade. For inside every expression and every figure lies a tale waiting to be told, sometimes uncommon and sometimes a few frescoes of the freakish. Within each and every episode, each and every vignette lives a story within a story. Sometimes a technical feat, sometimes an unusual occurrence, and sometimes things only the educated eye will catch. My directing episode, Death on a Barge, posed budgetary concerns. Shooting at night was a problem, so we used a technique called Day for Night. We spent an entire day chasing the sun to keep the actors in silhouette. Then, with the sun behind them, the film could be processed so that it appeared to have been shot at night. In my starring episode, She'll Be Company for You, I was directed by Jerry Finneman, who was the original cameraman on the Star Trek series. There's much to watch for below the surface of the obvious, inside the night gallery. One that was such fun, and it wasn't meant to be, was Leslie Nielsen when he played Phantom of the Opera. That is one of the funniest things you'll ever see in your life because Leslie Nielsen is in the position of having to, as the Phantom of the Opera, wear this big mask and carry a fully grown woman down about 20 stone steps. Who are you? <laughs> By the time Leslie gets to the bottom of the, th of the steps, he's totally exhausted. And, and, and as he's talking, the, the, the mask is going into his throat and then coming back out and into his throat and coming out. <gasps> I am the scourge of Paris. I am the phantom of the opera. People are saying, for God's sake, Leslie, can't you, uh, you know, not breathe? Oh, you carry this broad down the stairs. And, then... <laughs> and, you know, Leslie Nielsen, I mean, he'll take anything and run with it. I'm really proud of the Caterpillar. Um, I think it was the first time Lawrence Harvey did television. They put it in my ear. Oh my dear God, they put it in my ear! It was a fantastic script, but the challenge was in three days to create the atmosphere. Everybody remembers that show. I want to die. I shouldn't have had the nerve to come here alone, you know. They are really quite harmless when they are sleeping. It was an episode called Smile, Please, with Cesare Denova, who uh, I play a little young a British reporter. I'll be the first person in history to ever photograph a genuine vampire. Well, I'm walking in all these British clothes, and they said, well, can you do an English accent? And I, I tried, it was terrible, but I did it anyway, <laughs> because it was campy. They said, that's fine, go ahead. But the coffin's empty. Tim Riley's bar uh, distilled the essence of Rod Serling at that time. Our first offering this evening, faces, paint, pigment, and desperation. The quiet desperation of men over 40 who keep hearing footsteps behind them and are torn between a fear and a compulsion to look over their shoulders. The painting is called, They're Tearing Down Tim Riley's Bar. It's a story of regret, and it's a story of things not done in life, and not being able to deal with the present, and um, only being able to find happiness in the past. It may be that you decide to call downtown for the Psycho Squad, but something different has been happening to me. I keep getting beckoned to by ghosts. Tim Riley's Bar is definitely the one to watch. I'm your tour guide through this unusual salon of unusual statuary and paintings. These are the sort of things that may not please you, but very likely may chill you, because this is the night gallery. In the words of Rod Serling, if you seem to sense an aura of cold dampness that permeates this room, attribute it not to either defective air conditioning or inclement weather. It's simply because this is rather a special place with special statuary and special paintings. And they carry with them a coldness that seems to go best in a crypt or a place like this called the Night Gallery. 
Rod Serling's words, and more importantly, his vision, are still as thought-provoking today as they were when he first began his career over a half century ago. Twisting time and space, blurring fantasy and reality, the cavernous walls of Rod Serling's night gallery remain intact for your viewing pleasure. Still as puzzling and disturbing as ever, this dark and demented gallery awaits you. Until we meet again, I'm Leonard Nimoy. I never knew what I was going to run into when I would show up for work. But I never, never, never fantasized that 30 years later, I'd be talking about it. For it to be recognized as a classic 30 years later, very proud to be part of it. It was fun, it, you know, it was, for me, it was all fun. It was all new, it was all learning. Welcome to the Night Gallery. <laughs> I would have liked to have done a lot more of the episodes. Uh, it was un too bad I got canned, you know. <laughs> I felt at home with Night Gallery. I loved the material, I loved the genre, it was very daring. What a privilege for me to work with Rod Serling on Night Gallery. I think it really works because you don't look at the series as a whole, instead you look at the segments themselves, each individual story. And I'm glad I came along then and glad I got to be part of it. Night Gallery was groundbreaking because it took risks. It was an exercise in creative imagination. I, mean, I, I don't know how else you can describe it. I'm very proud to have been a part of that, of that anthology series. I'm just sorry that Rod Serling isn't alive to bask in the beauty of his work.